Hi, everybody. So we're back with our Taxpert webinar series, and we have Barton from Rentler here. Um, I'm going to let Barton go ahead and introduce himself and tell you a little bit about the company. Yeah, so I'm Barton Strawn. I'm the marketing director at Rentler, uh, and um, I am also, uh, was once a landlord myself, so that's kind of how I got uh, started with Rentler uh, over here, but um, Rentler is an online property management uh, platform specifically built for DIY landlords. Uh, so that is um, our specialty and every tool that we build, we try to keep that in mind. Um, like I said, I was a landlord myself, a DIY landlord. So uh, I've kind of got some uh, background in that and uh, always find it interesting as to how we continue to uh, build things and hopefully solve issues for that particular customer. So. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So we, we work with a lot of do it yourself landlords and we try to um, look for softwares such as this to help, you know, if they're not ready for a big powerhouse software, um, they look a lot for like tenant screenings and how to list their property. So you guys do all that as we well? Do. Yeah. We do. We do. So the tool, uh, we're based out of Utah. And so in the uh, early days, I guess I'll give a little bit of background uh, on the company as a whole. But in the early days, uh, it was started as a listings tool uh, that had some other uh, I guess, management features. And then over time, it's evolved into this much more robust management tool. Um, but we are actually partnered with a large site here in Utah called KSL. Um, and so we actually integrate with them and run their listing service as well. Uh, so we are one of the largest listing services in the state of Utah um, and then are growing regionally uh, here in the West Coast uh, in general. But we do have listings all over the country. Uh, but that's kind of how it got started was with listings and then over time we've added things like applications and screenings uh, because that made sense you know with that core listings tool in the beginning uh, and then as we've gotten bigger you know we've added payments uh, maintenance uh, we have some basic accounting software in there that we're continuing to expand uh, we have forms right now just in utah but we're expanding into other states uh, specifically on the west coast right now uh, so yeah we're we're continuing to build that suite of tools for somebody who's trying to manage their property or properties. So the listings, the listings part is nationwide. Any landlord could use it or are you, any, being, are any you a landlord, landlord can use it. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you want to kind of take us through the process of just what happens once they sign up um, for this software and just, you know, the life kind of of a tenant and a lease and just how you go through and how you can use the software throughout that lease? Sure thing. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll actually jump over to our listing service and it's going to drop me into Utah because that's where I am right now. Um, but this is what our listing service looks like for somebody who's searching for um, a particular property. Um, and then obviously you can zoom in, uh, you'll search different things. Uh, over here, you'll, you'll see the specifics, I guess, of what you're searching in the map view over here. Um, but to set up a listing, uh, you'll create an account. It's super simple. Um, if, you, if I wasn't already logged in, you would actually just see a create account button here. You would click that. Uh, and it just mm -hmm. asks for your name, first name, last name, uh, and email address. And you can create a free account. Accounts are free for anybody to create um, landlords or tenant. Um, and once you have created an account, you'll actually drop into a dashboard uh, that looks like this, but doesn't have, um, right now I actually have a sample property here, but wouldn't have a property there. Uh, it would just have an add new. Uh, to do anything in the Rentler system, you have to add a property. Um, that is the core piece of our uh, software. So you would just add your property. Um, you select your property type here, basic information. Uh, if you want to put a photo in here, you can, uh, usually like the front of the house or, you know, maybe the image of, uh, the main room in an apartment, um, or condo, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then once you submit that, you're ready to begin building on top of that, uh, property. Uh, the next piece that you would have to do is a lease. Um, so I've actually already created a property here. Um, that's actually... Uh, where I live and created a lease for myself. Uh, so once you are uh, set up with your property, um, you will, there's a button here that says create a lease or you can go up here and add a new lease. 
Um, so we can just click add new lease. I only have my one property. If you had multiple properties, they would all show up here. Um, but you can select that. Um, very simple at this point. You just put first, last name, email, phone number of uh, whatever tenant it might be uh, that you are adding to the lease. Um, and then you walk through that process. I'll jump back actually to this. Um, this is a lease that I already set up um, for myself, but you can see uh, that all the information is in there. Um, and then the second step that you would have uh, is creating the terms of that lease. This isn't legally binding. We're assuming that as a landlord, you've already had somebody actually sign a uh, paper contract for your particular property. Um, but this is just letting the system know how long uh, they should be managing this particular tenant or tenants in this case. Um, so you put a start date. Uh, I have no end date, uh, but if you wanted to put that end date in there, you would. And then if there's a unit number or letter, you would also want to put that in there as well. Um, so that would be the second step. And then once you've created that, this is uh, the tab that you would see here. Um, so that is how you would start to, I guess, manage your property um, if you already had tenants that you were ready to onboard there. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to list, you would come down to listings. Um, I started a listing here. And uh, the listings is pretty much like your standard wizard. You would go through, um, add a title for your listing, description, um, all of your basic information here. And then uh, if you were listing it for somebody else, um, you may have you know, contact information that is not the same um, as the owner necessarily. So you could change the contact information. Uh, and then you can say if you want to receive phone calls or receive texts, um, and then as you go through the steps, it'll walk you through um, everything that you would actually need to fill out. Um, and we're actually in the process um, of building a new uh, video right now that'll be on our YouTube channel that walks somebody through every single step of the listings process and getting that live. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, um, in that listings, the last page on this listings is actually an accept applications um, or accept. Uh, or I guess require screenings with an application. Uh, if you do that, this is uh, where all of your applications would start to come in. Um, so on this property, I'm not accepting applications right now, but if you turn it on, uh, you will start to get applications through your listing on the rental site. Uh, you can also send out a link to anybody. So let's say you have somebody that finds your property, but they didn't find it on Rentler. You could send them an application link as well, and that application will end up on this dashboard. Oh, cool. So when people are Googling, if they typed in one of those properties that's on Rentler, would it show up just through Google search? Do you guys get a lot? Of it would. Mm -hmm. okay. It would. Does so, it syndicate out to other um, platforms, or it's just on Rentler? Right now, it's just on Rentler. Mm -hmm. uh, we are planning on doing some syndication. Uh, that's actually... Uh, one of the, I guess, additional pieces to the listings tool that we're working on right now, uh, but it is not currently live. Okay. Uh, it will be soon, we hope, though. So once the tenant, um, for example, or prospective tenant finds it, um, and you know if they find it just on the Google search, it takes them right to the rentler site, and they're able to like request an application or request to get screened. Uh, as a tenant, if your if the landlord has said that they are accepting applications, mm -hmm. uh, they can actually, there's a button on a listing. Let's see if I can jump back um, to, I'll look for a listing, and I bet I can find one that is accepting applications um, here. Let's see. This is a great example. So uh, this is a live, actu an actual live listing right now. Um, in Salt Lake City. So you can see all of your basic information starts to show up. Images um, are showing up here. Your description. Um, we do have an amenities step where you can select amenities that we've pre-populated. Uh, you can also add custom amenities. So if you have uh, something like, um, let's say, a, um, a fire pit in the backyard, um, you know, if they had a fire pit, they could actually add that as a custom amenity to this list. Um, they have their pet, 
uh, policies, lease terms. Um, we do have a piece in there that uh, goes through the utility section um, and shows what the tenant is going to be responsible for. Um, and then uh, it'll give you an idea of where that actual listing is. So, um, but uh, if you Googled, you know, duplex in Salt Lake City, uh, this property may show up in Google. Um, you click on that link, this is where you would land. This uh, person has decided that they are going to accept applications through the system. And so this button, you just hit apply now. Uh, I am already signed in. And so it drops me straight into the tenant application flow where you would just edit this information and then you would submit that to the uh, landlord. Um, but if you don't have an account with Rentler yet, it'll prompt you to create an account. Once you've created an account, it'll actually drop you right into this um, applications screen right here and you'll start to fill out your information. Um, this is a great example actually. I'd, didn't even know uh, that this person was accepting screenings, but they've actually required a screening with every application. Okay. And so um, it already shows that once you submit your application here, it'll actually take you to the next step, which is the screening step, um, where as a tenant, you will put that information in and then uh, it will attach that screening to your application so that they're able to review all that information at one time. Does the screening come directly through Rentler or does a landlord um, outsource that? So the screening comes directly through Rentler. Okay. Um, the uh, tenant does have to initiate the screening. Um, and so uh, if a landlord requires it, as in that case, um, once the tenant goes through the application process and submits the screening, they're actually the one ordering the screening from us um, and then allowing the the landlord to view that. Okay, so does the tenant pay for it or is that something the landlord pays for? Or uh, Typically we see the tenants paying for the screenings, okay. uh, but the landlord can opt to pay for the screenings. Okay. Um, they're $35 a screening. That okay. includes a background and credit check. Um, but yeah, usually we see landlords uh, put okay. that cost on the tenant. And, and you, can, you can collect the fee through the software? When it does. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So when they click that um, next step and it says start screening, uh, they'll put in some basic information there and uh, just like you would for any screening. And then it'll also have payment information there. So the um, assuming that the tenant is going to be responsible for paying, uh, it'll allow them to put in their uh, credit card information or bank information right there to pay for it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, one of the nice things about it as well, um, you know, let's say that you are used to doing a paper screening um, and a lot of tenants can be a little weary about handing over something like their social security number on a piece of paper to a landlord um, that they don't really know quite yet. Uh, our system does keep all of that information private. And then when we share the screening with the uh, landlord, um, we will be showing them like your credit uh, check and background uh, check, so places you've lived, things like that. Um, but we do keep things like the social security number uh, private from the landlord. So the tenant's not having to hand that over uh, to a landlord that they don't know yet. Okay. Yeah, you wanna go through? Oh yeah, so, um, so you've got, you've approved your tenant and they're in there. So do you want to take us through like the other features, like how they can pay their rent once they are a Definitely. tenant and how they can yep. submit maintenance yeah. requests? Yeah, for sure. So um, the, one of the nice things is they can pay through uh, the system as well. We've seen a lot of people begin to adopt it. Um, it does, uh, this is one of the services that is uh, for a charge. Um, again, the landlord typically will put this onto their tenants, um, but they can choose to pay for it. Um, as well, if they want to, uh, but it's $1.95 uh, to use your bank account, and then debit is only 1.9%. Uh, credit is a little more. If you want to use a credit card, it's 2.9%, yeah. um, but we do see some tenants who choose to do that, um, but as a landlord, you would come into the system. Once you've added a person to the lease, so again, you would need to add your property and then make sure that you've added uh, whoever that tenant is into that property. Um, you would come down to payments, um, add a new payment. Again, I've already set that lease up, so it's showing up here for me. 
click on that. And then this is where you would enter your basic information. So when is it due? How much are they going to be paying? Um, if, you know, right now this is automatically calculating this out for me based on the rest of August. Um, but if I wanted to prorate that, it'll tell me how much this first month would be. Uh, mm -hmm. If your landlord provides a grace period, you can put that in there as well. Um, how much a final payment is going to be. Uh, I've got no end date right now, but I can unselect that. And then it would allow me to select um, basically when the end of that lease is going to be um, down there. So I will actually um, select that and we can go to the next. Um, let's just put the amount in there. And I'll go to the next step. So to set up your account as a landlord, um, you would enter, have to enter your personal information and your physical address. Um, we accept uh, payments. We're actually running all of our payments uh, through a program called Stripe, which you might've heard of. Um, that's who we've partnered with to actually do the transactions mm -hmm. for us. Um, and part of the process of setting up at least your initial payment is we do have to verify your identity, which is why we ask for all of this information which may seem like it's a little bit overkill um, for just setting up a payment series. Uh, but as part of that partnership, we go through a process where we are verifying that as a landlord, you are who you say you are. Um, so when you start asking for a tenant for information um, and for payments, they have some security in knowing that we've at least done some, uh, some of our due diligence on our end. Um, we take fraud pretty seriously here. Uh, we've got a team that that's all they do is really check against um, some of this verification information and make sure that we're cutting down on fraud. Um, so we, uh, we do ask for maybe a little more information than some other platforms might in this step. Um, but verification happens pretty quickly, usually within a day or two. And once you've been verified, uh, then the payment process will automatically start for you. So the next step here would be uh, you go in um, and put in your bank account information or link your bank uh, and you're ready to start accepting payments from the, the tenants that you've linked in the leases. Awesome. Do you guys transfer out, um, I know using Stripe, do you guys transfer out like as soon as, you know, the payment clears or do you have certain days that it, they go out to a landlord? So we're very, very quick. We don't actually hold any money. Uh -huh. um, so it will transfer as soon as it clears. Uh, we usually see that uh, happening anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Okay. So it is a very quick transfer yeah. period compared to some of the other platforms. Yeah, there's definitely softwares that have, these are the three dates we transfer, and if you miss one, you're on with yeah. the next one. Nope. They can set it up to be due whenever they want it to be due. Yeah. Um, and they can provide, you know, again, they can provide a grace period. Um, so those pieces of information are what will impact, you know, when the landlord is actually getting the money. Um, in their bank account during the month. Um, but assuming that they've set that information up, I guess, accurately to whatever they need it to be, yeah, the money will transfer in at whatever point that they've requested. That's great. Um, do you uh, guys have, sorry to interrupt. Nope, uh, go ahead. For the tenant, I know that you were saying they can put in their payment information. Is there a way that once they put it in, it's going out automatically, or do they log in each month and have to manually initiate? Yep. So um, I will jump to payments. I actually, um, well, I'm logged in as myself right now, so I can't uh, instigate a payment series as a tenant because I'm logged in as a landlord. Um, but yes. So once uh, you've set it up as a landlord, the tenant has gone into the system and set up their bank account information. They can automate that payment. Um, oh. It's as simple as just letting the system know that you want to automate it. Usually people will do that with a bank account. Typically, they don't do that with, uh, we haven't seen many people do it with a debit or a credit card mm -hmm. um, with the automation. Um, but yes, they, they can kind of set it and forget it, so to speak, um, unless they want to come in each month and, and manually do it. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so then I guess another big part that a lot of landlords that we work with are looking for um, is maintenance. Like how mm -hmm landlord gets notified of a maintenance request and kind of just what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I'm going to jump to accounting really quickly, just so you can, well, <laughs> I said I'm going to jump to accounting. Um, 
I haven't set up a payment yet. To use accounting as a tool in our system, you do have to have an active payment series. Um, but what that'll do for a user is basically uh, give them a very quick glance at all of the bank deposits that have gone out from all of their different properties um, and from which tenant it's been paid. Um, so it's just a ledger basically of all of those different uh, payment, uh, rent payments that have been coming in, uh, which makes it hopefully easy to see <laughs> who is a good tenant and maybe who is uh, not as great of a tenant. Yeah. Um, really good feature to have. Yeah. Yeah. And we are building out more on the accounting side. We've had a lot of requests for that. It's a pretty simple tool right now and we're hoping mm -hmm. that it'll become um, even more robust uh, here in the near future. So. So they'll be able to, I saw it said coming soon, they'll be able to like run a delinquency report. Exactly. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Oh yeah, it does say that. Yeah, so we're working on rent roll, delinquency, cash flows, and then profit loss. Um, the first piece of that being, uh, right now we don't actually have a way for you to log expenses, um, but that'll be the first step in that process is we're going to create okay. an expense tracker uh, that'll link with your accounting, um, your payments essentially. And then that will allow you to run some of these other reports that you're seeing down here. Okay. Um, yeah, so maintenance and maintenance is probably one of the biggest things that we um, actually see used um, by a lot of landlords. Uh, you do still have to add a property and you do still have to add a, a tenant through the lease feature. Um, but once you do that, um, I'll go up here and add a request. So you can actually add a request to your own property um, but on the tenant side, they would all, they also have a maintenance tab, um, and they will, uh, only have one lease ideally. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they won't, they won't have to select a lease, um, uh, feature. They'll have this maintenance request piece in here. Um, and so it's just as simple as, you know, like need faucet fixed, um, as the title, they can put as many details in here as they want. Um, and they can rank it. So, you know, if it's something small, isn't really too big of an issue um, for the faucet, maybe it's just kind of your average request. They put some details in here. Um, you can add photos or files, other file types. Um, you just click upload and you can select a file. Um, we do highly recommend always attaching photos if you're a tenant. It helps, you know, your landlord obviously uh, figure out what they need to do. Um, and then you would just submit. So um, I'll add a little description here. You have to add a, or uh, have to add details. You do not have to add files, but again, we recommend it if you can. Um, and then simple as submit. So um, if you're submitting as a landlord, if you just want to log a maintenance request, that's how you would do that. This is the screen you come to. If you are a tenant, you do the exact same thing you would get this screen here, but you would not see this. But because I'm in the landlord dashboard, I'll see this maintenance request dashboard. So I'll click it. Um, and so you'll get a series of requests just like this shows, you know, where um, the request is being made, when it's been made, um, how important it is. I'm actually going to submit a second request just for the sake of, um, showing some filtering features. Um, but the door, I'll say the door handle is broken. It's a major request. Um, and we'll submit that. And so now you'll see anytime a major request comes in, it'll automatically float to the top um, above any of your normal or minor requests, uh, just so a landlord can start to prioritize what they need to get to first. Um, once that has been submitted, once you're on the dashboard, if you click on it, right, um, you're working on it, so your status is open, shows your importance. Um, let's say for some reason the landlord thinks that this uh, task is actually a more important task, they can come in and change it, um, and it will automatically update for them. So we jump back, and so you'll see it's now jumped uh, into a major Maybe they think this is not as important. They can change that status. That's um, a good yeah. <laughs> and so you can just start to, you know, as a landlord, you can begin to filter um, your requests in a way that makes sense. Yeah. So you do can the see, tenants get notified at all when you're changing that? They do. Yep, yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, and then here's another thing, uh, another piece of it, I guess, that's important and will notify a, um, a tenant, right? So let's say that you've called your maintenance guy and he's three days out. You know, you can come in and say, you know, Joe will come on the 30th of August, let's say. Um, if it's a note for yourself, you don't have to show the tenant. So you could select that there. But I want my tenants to know that that person's coming. So I'll comment. It gets added to my queue here. Um, and the tenant themselves will actually be getting an email um, and a notification in their dashboard that says, hey, you know, for that maintenance request, Joe is now going to be there on the 30th. So, um, and then once it's fixed, a lot of times you'll have somebody, you know, from the landlord side come in here and say, hey, the faucet's been fixed. They'll have a photo of the changed out item. They'll upload the photo so the tenant knows that it's been done and then add that comment there. And then all you would do is come up here, close it out, save it, and then you can jump back. And now that one um, has been completed, right? So it's no longer active. Um, and I can just go to open requests and it'll only show those open requests. That's great. Um, so the default is all requests. You can filter by open or closed requests if you need to see something. Um, new to old, old to new. Again, a lot of people will do high to low importance um, just so they know what is the most important thing to get fixed there. Mm -hmm. And then if a tenant has like a request open, they're able to, you know, if something happens in addition to what they originally put in, are they able to go back and add more details? They are. Yep. So they would see something very, um, I actually close, I clicked on the one that I managed to close out. Um, but, uh, once the task is closed, there won't be any more commenting on that. Um, mm -hmm. but as long as the task is open, um, as a tenant, uh, you'll see the exact same comment details box and you can go in, add a new comment and say, you know, whatever my, whatever additional thing may have happened, add it in there and then let your landlord know just by commenting. Does do these like whatever open our uh, issues that a want a particular tenant have is that does that appear on like their tenant profile if you would just go to one tenant and see their requests? So they, so the re the maintenance requests will show up under these or okay. are attached to these leases. Um, okay. not necessarily a specific tenant because um, I'll click on this lease here. But, you know, I have only added myself under this lease, but you can have multiple people under a lease. So we're attaching those maintenance uh, requests to a lease and not specifically to a tenant. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. But it will show you, um, I'll cancel out here and go back. Um, it will show you, just like you see here, if you have an image uploaded for your profile, it'll tell you who is commenting. So let's say there's um, two or three people on a lease, if that's how you've uh, structured it, um, yeah. and each of the three people comment something different, it will tell you who's actually writing the comments. It won't just tell you about it from the lease perspective. Okay. But yeah, the maintenance request is attached to the lease, not to specifically the tenant. Okay. And then I see below, um, yeah, I was gonna have a little bit more time, um, messages. So mm -hmm. do you get a lot of landlords that communicate just through Rentler? We do, we do. Um, I we know are, landlords we know like to uh, minimize time on the phone, so. For sure, yeah, we do. Um, the messaging system is, um, so it's not necessarily a universal messaging system. Um, so as you see here, you can't initiate a message from this, from this particular dashboard. Um, if I had messages, um, they, would, they would show up here and I could send uh, messages from here and receive messages in here. But messages are um, actually linked to uh, more, I guess linked more contextually to things. Mm -hmm. So you can message from listings, message within applications, uh, message within screenings, and then uh, we are soon to release messaging within payments. Um, okay. And so once that message is begun within one of those contexts, it will show up in your messaging dashboard. A lot of times what happens is um, as a landlord, you've been messaging with somebody through the application process, 
And then once they move in, they continue to use that same thread to message with each other uh, within that. Um, so that is one of the interesting things. It's not a um, pure messaging platform like you might see uh, or you might think of with um, like a Google chat or something like that where you can kind of initiate messages at any point in time. Um, but uh, you can use the messages more contextually within those tools and they will all show up here uh, once they've begun. So, I mean, it seems like a really great user-friendly software from yeah. what I can see. It looks yeah. like it's very easy to navigate for both sides. Um, I know we have like probably a couple minutes left. Do you want to mention anything that's like up and coming? I know we talked about the accounting and we talked about um, the listings syndicating to other platforms. Are there any other new features that you guys are really excited to roll out? Reports too. We are, we are. Um, yeah, we're currently, you, you kind of hit on a lot of the big ones that we've been working on. Um, some of the other things, uh, like we said, right now for forms, we only have uh, Utah forms at the moment. We are expanding our form database though. Um, are those, actually, those are free for any of your users to utilize? They are not free. Right now they're $25. Um, and for $25, you get all of these forms. Yeah, that's a, that's, yeah. that's a really great deal. Um, and so we're building out more of those, um, but we're also going to be changing the way um, you actually tap into forms a little bit. Um, and so what will happen um, in the near future, we hope, we're actually creating document storage uh, and a forms marketplace. And so what that will allow is for us to expand the, the places that we have forms um, available for. And it'll, it'll also allow uh, landlords to edit those forms within the system uh, oh, yes. and then yeah. send those out for signature within the system to their uh, potential tenants. So we are working on that. Um, you're working on electronic signature, you said too? We are. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. That's really cool. That'll be part of the forms um, mm -hmm. and it'll be part of the document storage. So you'll be able to upload um, whatever document you might want to, um, to either a lease or a property. So you could upload, you know, the actual signed lease yes. um, into this piece right here. So, you know, both the landlord and the tenant have it. Um, but we're also working on it to where, you know, let's say uh, you want to keep um, your um, uh, mortgage information. You might not want to keep that in the system. Um, but it, with document storage, you would be able to upload literally any document that pertained to this property into the system and link it to that property. Like maintenance invoices and just stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Exactly. So that's probably the biggest thing um, as far as tools go that we're working on. Um, the soonest feature to be released where we've been working on rentability reports, which is, uh, you know, our rent report um, that you can request for your property. So mm -hmm. once you've set up a property in the system, you can request a um, comparable rent report to that property. Uh, and uh, it will link back to, you know, your system so you know when, when you ran it um, and for what property. Okay. And ideally, um, you'll be able to make sure you're charging, you know, accurately for your property that you have in the system. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. That's so, yeah, that's, the, it's a lot of tools that are coming out soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've, we're lucky to have a great team uh, on our end that have been working uh, in a lot of different directions and uh, hopefully they, they still like us, but I think sometimes they maybe are, uh, they're ready for us to stop coming up with new ideas. <laughs> they're, they're all look really good though. Really great. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time to yeah. go through this with us. Yeah, for sure. Not a problem at all. Happy to. And and yeah, uh, you know, for anybody that um, is thinking about getting in uh, into the Rentler system and has some questions or, you know, wants any help even getting set up on the system, I am going to jump out. Um, but you'll actually see contact Rentler support down here. If you oh, come okay. to Rentler.com, you can uh, add this information and you can chat with a um, support person. They'll help walk you through it just via chat. Um, we have a lot of people do that. Yeah. Or uh, if you want to, I'll scroll down here. You can contact support. You can write an email. Another great way to contact them. Um, 
and then the final way would be phone. So uh, we have a lot of people who, as they're getting set up, you know, they might uh, come into some questions, wonder how uh, they need to set up payments, let's say, or, you know, they might be missing a step and just can't quite figure out what's wrong. Uh, we highly encourage anybody to give that number a call uh, and, and talk to our support team. They're great. They'll make sure that uh, everything gets set up smoothly for you. So. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, we'll have um, those links listed below as well so yeah. people can um, take a look at the website. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank well, you. I appreciate it. Yeah, no. Yeah, you too. Thank you for your time. Yeah, certainly. And feel free to reach back out if you have anything else that uh, we can help you with. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Thank you. Thank cool. you, Martin.